Hi Lorraine, I'm going to take a shot at explaining how I would try to answer your question using Lexis. From the library's page, I'm going to go to Find Articles, Law, LexisNexis Academic. Once I'm in LexisNexis Academic, I'm going to go to U.S. Legal. You have indicated that we're interested in California codes and cases. So I might start in federal and state cases. I'm going to suggest that we might be better off searching state statutes, codes, and regulations. And that's just because, you know, the annotated codes, if I find a code section that I'm interested in, the annotated codes are going to point me towards relevant cases. So this might just let me kill two birds with one stone if I find something in the annotated codes. So I'll click on state statutes, codes, and regulations. And then the default is to search Alaska. Obviously, we're not interested in searching Alaska. We're going to search California. Um, below that, you can see the default is to search the statutory code. That's perfect for right now. But if you want to search the California Code of Regulations at some point, obviously, you'd switch that to the administrative code. Um, it's possible at some point you'd want to be searching the code and the Constitution. But for this question, I think it's going to be fine just to search the code. Now, I could come up here and start searching, but what I want to recommend to your students is that you use the advanced search. And that's simply because the advanced search is what's going to be the most similar to what you're actually going to use in a law office. You want to master the terms and connectors searching in the advanced search, because those are the skills then you're going to be able to transfer to Westlaw or Lexis or, or whatever it is that you might end up using later on in your career. Now, at this point, I would want to think about what keywords I want to pop in here. Let's take a look at your question again. All right, so I'm going to suggest that keywords might be respondent, uh, discovery, electronically stored information, and burdensome, oppressive, over broad. So let's start putting some of those terms into our search. It's early in the morning and I haven't had that much coffee yet, so forgive my typing. So I could put in respondent. What I think is going to work best is to take those last few letters off and put an exclamation point after the N. That's going to make it so I get anything that starts with those letters. So now I would not only get respondent, I would get response or responses. Now the other term I think that we would want to put in would be discovery. So you know, Lexis is not like searching Google. I don't want to just pop in keywords next to each other. If I do that, I'm going to get few or no hits every time because Lexis is looking for me to connect my terms with what we call connectors or Boolean operators like AND or NOT. So here I'm going to do respond, respondents AND discovery. And then I might also think about if there's some other terms here that would work. You know, when we keyword search, we only get things that use exactly the language we've searched for. So the more that I can think of alternative terms or synonyms, the, the better off I'm going to be typically. So I'll try discovery or e-discovery, since you mentioned it's electronic information that I'm, I'm trying to access. And, you know, I'm just going to try that with the dash as well, just because I'm not sure what the standard uh, way to do to spell e-discovery is. So discovery or e-discovery or e-discovery with the dash. I'll look at your question again. Okay, electronically stored information. And since you've put that in quotes, that's that's kind of a key to me that that might be a really good phrase to search for. So I'll certainly try that. And to search for something as a phrase, you just put it in quotes. Although here, again, I'm going to try to think of alternative terms, electronically stored information, or I might just go with electronic, and with the exclamation point. Um, just going to get a little bit creative here. Yeah, let's try that. And then what's the last thing I'm looking for here? Burdensome, oppressive, overbroad. So that's really nice because, Lorraine, you have been so kind as to provide the alternatives or alternative terms or synonyms for me. Thank you very much. So let's try that. And uh, 
So, and again, I just want to connect those alternative terms to the word or. All right, so let's just make sure this, this looks like a decent search here. So I've got respondents and discovery or e-discovery or e-discovery and electronically stored information or electronic or computer and burdensome or oppressive or overbroad. That's a definitely, that's a decent starting point. There's a lots of different ways that we could manipulate this search still. We could try instead of and, we could search, you know, within the same paragraph or within the same sentence or within a certain number of words of each other. I'm just going to go ahead and start with and and see what that does for us. And that got me 53 results. So, you know, being as broad as I was searching for like words like computer, that might not have done me any favors. Uh, I might even, since I've got so many, I might want to go back and, and edit that search. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's try that. That's better, 39. And, you know, you can see there's some hits coming up in several different codes, you know. Obviously, I might have to look through those, but when we're talking about discovery, I've got a pretty good idea that that's going to end up being in the, the Code of Civil Procedure, so I'm probably going to focus my, my searching there. Um, we got a little blurb here. Sometimes that'll be enough to tell us, you know, if we want to look at these hits or not. Eventually, I think we're going to start finding that most of the hits that we'd be interested in would be around California Code of Civil Procedure 2031. Yeah, let's see here. Establishing reasonableness of accessibility of electronic information, uh, response to inspection demand, inspection and production of documents. So those are all just things that, that give me a clue. This, this might be where I want to be. And since these are all so close to each other, you know, once I get in, to the section, it's going to be easy for me to kind of navigate around really quickly. So I'll go ahead and, and click there. And I could scan through here and see if this does seem like it's going to be helpful. If it is, then good. I've got, you know, one of the code sections that I might be interested in. If I keep going down to, uh, well, in these collateral references, I might get some ideas for other places that I would want to look, do some research. I believe we have this Matthew Bender practice guide on California e-discovery, so you could go into the library and, and take a look at that. But then eventually also I get to the notes of decisions. So if I'm looking for codes and cases, then I would want to take a look through here and see if any of these cases would be, would be of interest to me. Now, remember I said there might be some other code sections around here that would be of interest. Um, you can kind of like flip through the pages by clicking these little arrows by document browse. That would just take you to the next, um, to the next session to the next section. Or if you click on Show Table of Contents, um, I can get a look at what all the code sections are that are around there. Well, Lorraine, if that's what passes for a basic question, good lord. Oh boy. Um, so I hope that was helpful. That was kind of a, a lot. If you have any questions, I hope you will let me know, get in touch with me, and, you know, for any students that uh, watch this, if you have any questions about how this worked, I'd be more than happy to go over this in, in more depth. All right, I hope that was helpful, Lorraine. Thank you.